Steinberg, and this is my house in North Carolina, Asheville, and this is House of Love and Light. This is a weekly gathering of spirits to just uplift and to look for and at the good and amplify it. Can I hear a hallelujah? So, this month, happy December, happy holidays, happy holy days. This month is all about compassion, and the book that we're reading this month is self-compassion. And I wanted to start today with a little bit from it, because today as we talk about compassion, we're talking about forgiving. Forgiving. So right off the top, you can bring to mind, you know, hi Lisa, Joanne, Sandy, Steph, so glad you're here. Um, so happy to see everybody. Lisa, if you're here from from uh, my, my friend that I met, And Michaels, what a treat for you to be here. Sandy, David, so glad that you guys are popping in to see me this morning. I hope if you're watching on the rewatch, I love you and I'm glad you're here too. So this is a little bit from this book about forgiveness and self-compassion and how the two kind of connect. Um, It is important to remember that forgiveness doesn't mean condoning bad behavior or that we need to interact with people who have hurt us. Discriminating wisdom clearly sees when an action is harmful or maladaptive and when we need to protect ourselves from those with bad intentions. However, it also understands that all people are imperfect and we all make mistakes. It understands that people often act out of ignorance, immaturity, fear, or irrational impulse, and that we shouldn't judge people for their actions as if they had full conscious control over them. (laughs) We've all been there, right? And even in those cases where people are cognizant of the harm they're causing, the question still needs to be asked. What happened to make them lose touch with their hearts? What wound occurred to lead to such cold and callous behavior? What's their story? Being human involves doing wrong at times. This means that to judge one person is to judge all the world. But to forgive one person is to forgive all of the world. Ourselves included ourselves included. Good morning, Jenny. So glad that you're here. So let's remember that. Let's remember to uh, to get into that space of forgiving ourselves this morning for everything that's going on in our lives and for maybe things we say to ourselves, things we say to others, the way we behave, the way we act. Sometimes we just totally screw up and that's life. So let's just stick to the mission here. I want to nourish you with some spiritual food, uplift you, make you feel good, inspire you to be your highest and best you connect with like minds, create a good time, explore, see what we find. I made this mission to to help me to stay on target. What I'm doing here for this hour together, I invite you to sit and be with me, to be with me and do these things that we're going to do, do these practices. The first practice, of course, is singing. Because when we sing, we tend to take deep breaths. And when we tend to take deep breaths, we calm our nervous system, which is so beautiful for us, isn't it? So this is about the light, because today as we as we talk about forgiveness, we're going to really let that light just shine, that holy light within us. <sighs> All right.
right? Burn away all that negativity. Burn it away. Let the wind blow it away. I light up the world with my light. 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 You want to sing it with me? I light up the world with my light. somebody that you're with or just look at the screen and sing it to me you you light up the world with your light 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 now bring somebody to mind that you need to forgive <laughs> and sing to that person About this little collective that we have here. We have somebody in New York, we have somebody in Georgia, we have somebody in Florida. I know there's people from California that are watching, North Carolina. Imagine those little points of light on the map. We light up the world. Let's sing it. We light up the world with our light. Light up the world with our light. We light up the world with our light. We light up the world with our light. Let's do I Light Up The World one more time for your little inner child. I light up the world with my light. 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 Deep breath here. Inside out. <sighs> Let's move into a time... of calming down, getting ready to receive any messages that come through today. to be present for you today. I am strength and love. I am joyful prosperity. Whatever it is that you need a little bit more of, that you feel you need a little bit more of, that you forget that you already are. I am abundance. I am connection. I am communion. I am family. I am happiness. Whatever it is, sing it out. way that we do here with New Thought Teachings, with present and positive, I'm working on loving me, Lisa says. All right. Right here, right now, in this holy moment, I know there is a good, there is a presence, there is an energy of life happening as this moment, as this moment right now, 
Wherever we are, wherever we're hearing this, it is God unfolding as love, as life, as expression, as experience. And it takes the face of you and me and this and now. It takes the face of compassion. It takes the face of acceptance. It takes the face of surrender. I know that as we are listening to this collection of spirits today, as we are listening to the gathering, we are feeling a peace wash over us. I feel a peace wash over us. I feel a confidence. I feel a healing. I am the love, the loving, and the love. Elisa says, I am childlike. I am present. Miss Michelle says, so glad you're all here. Welcome, welcome to the house. I am a holy light. I'm so grateful, so grateful to be here with you this beautiful morning. So grateful for these words, for this time, for the interwebs. I say thank you, God. Thank you, good. Thank you, love. Thank you, life. I release the words, and together we say... And so it is, or amen, or hallelujah, and we sing, I am holy light. Come on. I am a holy light. Hell yeah. I am a holy light. I'm one with God. wash over me and I'd like to speak your affirmations out into the world love to you Jennifer Joanne says I am childlike Elisa says I'm loved loving and love Michelle says I am present um, Joanne says in the flow Jenny says I am energy Lisa says I'm working on loving me Lisa says I am healthy Sandy says I am peace and joy Lisa says hello Lisa says I am healed Jeannie says I am confident and if I'm missing your comments, it's because you're on another feed and I can't see you. There's only a few, a few, um, I only see the house of love and light feed in front of me. So you are those things. We are those things right here, right now. Good morning, Charlie. Blessings to you as well. And we light the candles here to honor the, uh, all paths that lead to the divine, whatever you think of as the divine, which is the universal intelligence, which is the quantum field, which is what I'm studying in ministerial school. And so happy to be sharing with you here today, which is love and light. And we honor all paths. So we do that with a little quick candle lighting. And today it is Jenny doing the candle lighting. Thanks for being here. Hi, I'm Jenny Scott from Kennesaw, Georgia. Hello, Hala family. Welcome to today's candle lighting. I light a candle for the Eastern tradition, Hinduism, Buddhism, and Taoism, that teaches about harmony, karma, and the way. I light a candle for Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, and Baha'i teaching us about tradition, forgiveness, surrender, and order. I light a candle for ancient wisdom and new thought traditions, including indigenous teachings, shamanism, paganism, science of mind, and new age spirituality, teaching us to root and expand. I light a candle for the great mystery, the eternal question, the not knowing. And as we say in the South, Namaste, y'all. Namaste, y'all. Thanks, Jenny. I love you so much. And I've been in contact with your minister over there at Unity North, and I'll be coming to visit you sometime in the spring, which I'm really excited about. Namaste, y'all. All right, before we get into our card poll for the day, I wanna 
ask you about your gratitude. I want you to get in tune with your, your gratitude. What are you grateful for right now that you can express in the comments, that you can bring to your mind, you could speak it into the room that you're in if you don't wanna write it in the comments. I just want you to speak it out into the world, whatever it is you're grateful for. And I'll start and you can just kinda of hop on and I'll read your gratitudes out. Um, you know, for me, I'm grateful, I'm so grateful that my best friend, you guys, from middle school came to visit me. She flew in yesterday and we have been having the best Time. She's helped me to rearrange the furniture in my house, which if you know me, then you know that that's my favorite pastime. Um, she has, we have hung out with my mom. We've had, you know, gone down memory lane. We've just had such a healing experience. So shout out to my bestie from 10 years old, Beanie, who's with me today. What a fucking trip, y'all. Can you imagine if your best friend from 10 years old came to visit? We haven't seen each other in at least 15 years. So it's just been awesome, totally awesome. So I'm grateful for that. That's my number one gratitude today. And I'm gonna read your gratitudes. Lisa says, grateful for my health. Sandy says, grateful for my friends, family, and freedom. I wanna shout out for Sandy. I'm grateful for you, Sandy. Sandy has been such a guide for me in the past many, many months in several ways. So I'm very excited for that. Um, Christmas, my favorite holiday, Lisa says. Um, happy, happy, happy Christmas to you. Steffi says, music, my man, moving, you, back at you. It is Stephanie's birthday week, you guys. So say happy birthday to Stephanie. Her birthday will be next Sunday, actually. Uh, or no, sorry, it's next, it's next Saturday. The rain, the rain, come on, Charlie. I'm grateful for the rain, too. I love the rain. What else do we have in the gratitudes? I'm just so grateful for this day. I'm grateful for this home that I have. I'm grateful for my kitties and for my dog, Tiki. Grateful for family and making mailing Christmas cards, my new green silk dress, Radiant. I saw that dress, it's gorgeous. Um, uh, Jeannie says music and art. Everybody's saying happy birthday to Stephanie and I say gratitude, gratitude, gratitude. Now Casey was pulling cards for us for many, many months and then she's like, I need a break from it. I've got too much going on. She's a radio DJ. She's amazing. She's a mom. She's incredible. So she's taking a break. So I'm pulling cards and I pulled this week from the Elemental Oracle deck for Stacey DeMarco. It's a beautiful deck and it's all about the elements. And the element that I picked today and today again, just to remind you of the topic and the theme, the theme of the month is compassion. The topic today is forgiving. And what came through was the wind. Look at that. Isn't that a gorgeous card? And I thought, how does that relate? How does wind relate to forgiving? Well, guess what? The winds of change are always blowing. And if we try to hold on to things and try to keep things a certain way, that's when we get into resentment and unforgiveness, right? It's when we let the wind blow and we let the winds of change blow. We let people come and go. We let relationships change. We let jobs change. We let our bodies change. We let things change. That's when we live in a space, I just got chills, of forgiveness, right? So, and compassion for others. It's like allowing people to just sort of be who they are is living in the wind, right? Living in the wind and not letting it blow you over, but letting it blow. Let that wind blow, y'all. You know what I'm saying? The only constant is change, what Lindsay says. Yes. Jeannie's been making brooms like the witch that she is. I love it so much. All right, so we have a resident guru here, if you've never been to House of Love and Light, and it is Ash Ruiz, who is currently living in Colorado. And he travels all over doing his amazing healing work. He's worked with all kinds of different incredible healers. Um, and uh, Ganga G, I think he's done some stuff with Brian Katie. He's incredible. So let's see what Ash has to say about compassion and forgiving. And then I'll be back with a message. So happy you're here. Hello there, loves. Ooh, so this holiday season, why don't you do something kind for yourself? Do something loving for yourself. Usually when we think about doing something kind and loving for ourselves, we think of maybe going and getting a massage or some body work or going to some special place, treating ourselves to dinner or to a yummy dessert or um, uh, what else? Going on vacation, going for a run, uh, going shopping. Uh, and what's really sweet is that one of the kindest things you can do for yourself 
One of the most luxurious things you can do for yourself, one of the healthiest things you can do for yourself is to forgive. Yes, to forgive. To stop and take inventory. Where might you still be holding some resentment, some idea, some story? Is it a good moment to forgive a particular person or a group of people? To forgive a time? To forgive a circumstance? To forgive a cosmic being? To forgive yourself? It's a moment to forgive is also a moment of surrender. A moment of willing to put down our story on the altar of a greater wisdom. One of my favorite singers and songwriters, a woman by the name of Rochelle Farrell, has a beautiful song called I Forgive You. I totally recommend you listen to it. But there's a line in the song that says, after she says, I forgive you, I forgive you, and then she's like, ah. And then the line says, what a freedom just releasing from my heart, from my mind. And so, I forgive you. Forgive, it feels so good to forgive. Oh, it feels so good to forgive, to let go of that energy. It feels so good to finally be where you always are, here, now. Here, to be where you are. Compassion. <laughs> I just really liked that picture. <laughs> I imagine that's like you, our inner goofball that's just forgiving. It's like, here, have a flower, self. Like, you're okay, everything's gonna be okay. <laughs> How much do you love that? How much do you love him? Give him a good look. He's great. Compassion. Forgiving. So I had this awesome experience this week. On Friday morning, I got a call. It wasn't even morning. It was like afternoon. I got a call from Reverend Darlene Strickland over at Unity of the Blue Ridge. And she said, Unfortunately, um, one of our singers has been in an accident. Now, luckily, the singer's okay. There was just a small concussion and she couldn't sing. But she said, would you be willing to come tonight and sing a few songs at our Christmas concert? And I was like, uh, yeah, because I love Unity of the Blue Ridge and I love you, Reverend Darlene. And I got there and I sang this song. And um, I thought that this song, Grace, for today would be so perfect um, uh, because when we're having that difficulty with forgiveness, when we're having that difficulty with forgiving ourselves or forgiving someone else, sometimes we have to turn to a higher power, right? That higher power lives within us, of course, but sometimes we need to turn to something outside of us. We kind of fall to our knees and we say, God, please, please, please help me, right? So I want you to listen to this song and imagine that Grace is wrapping you in her arms. This is my song, Grace. When the shadows fall all around And the day disappears without a trace When the blackness of night drops down I call on grace 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 when the lonely is too much to bear and the world feels like a cage when nothing is easy or fair When you fall 
make you wonder the meaning of it all. And it feels just like you're going under when you fall. Disappears without a trace when the blackness of night drops down. I call on grace, grace, grace. I'm calling on grace, grace, grace. Won't you call? From Ernest Holmes, the person who is to succeed will never let his mind dwell on past mistakes. He will forgive the past in his life and in the lives of other people. If he makes a mistake, he will at once forgive it. If there's a mistake that you've made that you haven't forgiven yourself for, can we do that now? Can we just take a moment right now? to forgive the mistakes that you've made and go a step further. Forgive others for the mistakes that they've made. Because you know what? We want to be free. We want to feel free to live our dreams, to live our lives from a place of joy. And it is just simply blocked by that bullshit. Okay, it is simply blocked. Louise Hay says forgiveness is for yourself because it frees you. It lets out, it lets you out of that prison that you put yourself in. Okay, imagine that you have stuck yourself in a room and it's dark and it's cold and it feels like there's no way out. But then you see that there's a door. And you realize as you walk closer and closer to that door that there's a silver lining coming through that crack and there's an opening and this is what forgiveness looks like to me, okay? It's that silver and that sliver of light in the darkest of the feelings. This is what forgiveness is. So if you you imagine that you're feeling some kind of way, you're feeling angry or sad or discordant, and these feelings, these negative feelings are just like being in a dark room. So as we make that decision to walk toward that door of forgiveness, toward that sliver of light, this is to say, I forgive you. I forgive you sadness. I forgive you anger. Not I rebuke you sadness or I'm mad at you anger. You can see how futile that is, right? Like I mean, I, I, I'm going to be mad at being mad. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. So when we feel a feeling, we can move through it much faster and easier with grace. And forgiveness is that, it's that sliver of light that gives us that moment of grace. One of my favorite teachers of forgiveness is Tara Brock, and she's a Buddhist teacher. And she says, forgiving means not pushing anyone or any part of our own being out of our heart. As we bring a full compassionate presence to the wounds that we've been protecting, we release the armoring of hatred and blame that has been imprisoning our heart right? So there's that word again, prison. That's, that's a sense of being locked up. Forgiveness frees us. It allows us to be authentic, to be present with what is. Just like Ash was telling us, it's the opposite of denial. It's saying, yep, this is happening. This feeling, this experience, this challenge, it's happening. And I'm living in the space of allowing of forgiving. This is a gentle, compassionate place. It allows for mistakes. It allows for messiness. 
what I found, what I find amazing about forgiveness, especially when dealing with forgiving others, is it's really, it's an inside job. Most of the time when we're in that space of like not forgiving, the person we have anger or resentment towards has no clue. (laughs) So we're in this self-made prison that we created, that we constructed. And even if they know, they don't think about it. They're not, I mean, most of the time, right? It's our own little story of what happened and we're punishing ourselves over and over. Well, When we take the time to consciously forgive, to release, to allow, to let go consciously, we are free. And Louise Hay again says, I love Louise around this too. She talks so much about self-love and about forgiving ourselves and allowing ourselves to be who we are. She says the act of forgiveness takes place in our own mind. It really has nothing to do with the other person. So the question becomes, how do we do this, right? How do we live in that grace? What's the action? And it's interesting because it's really nothing that we do. It's what we feel about the situation. It's how we frame a situation. It's how we think about it. So we can reframe, we can rename, we can give love where there's dark feelings. This is the antidote. Here it is again, y'all. Love, it's a house of love and light. We can shine light on it and let the love in. We can take a moment and send some love. Find it deep inside of us. Send a little love to the person, to the thing, to the aspect of ourselves that we find unacceptable. When we give it love, we can be in that freedom. And this freedom gives us an opportunity to what? To be happy, right? We just want to be happy. We can't really be happy and feel free when we're pissed off. Can we? I mean, I mean, think of that. It's like having these tight fists and being like, I'm relaxed. I'm relaxed. (laughs) When we're angry or not accepting, we become drained and exhausted. And this is not to say that grief isn't real. I'm in the middle of grief. I'm smack in the middle of grief right now. And I'm still feeling joy and happiness because I'm allowing. Even when that anger or that sadness comes up, I just let it flow through me. I allow it. I forgive it. You know, I had this beautiful conversation with my mother last night. We had a huge fight. You know, being my mom, we've got stuff. But I'm falling in love with my mom right now. It's this beautiful experience of of being with her. And she's been been my best friend lately. So we had this huge conversation last night and this huge fight and this huge makeup session where we talked about it, about our, our lives and our journeys. And she expressed to me, I'm sharing something sort of private about my mom, but She expressed to me that as a child, she put up so many walls because she's one of these people that like when somebody screws her over, she's first of all, she's a triple Scorpio. So, but when somebody screws her over, she's done. She's done. She doesn't turn back. She doesn't give them another chance. She doesn't try again. She's done. And I admire that in her, but I also see that that energy comes from a place of wounding, right? And there's, there's a line there, right? Because she's not right. And I'm not right. I'm not right to completely like allow somebody to come back in and come back in and come back in after I get hurt again and again and again, which I've done with many different kinds of relationships, personal relationships, jobs. Um, I I just, I'll, I'll just let myself get beat up over and over again. Right. But she won't do that at all. And so I think there's a line in between there, right? There's forgiveness. And then there's also compassion and self-compassion for yourself and having boundaries, right? But anyway, she, she opened up to that softening to see, oh, wow. Okay. This is just because you have no walls, Amy, because I have no walls. I will forgive you a thousand times. That's just the nature of my spirit. And why? She made it pretty clear to me. It's because I grew up in a house that I could feel my feelings. Even if I was having a temper tantrum, I mean, she would scream at me to stop crying, but still I was allowed to have that temper tantrum. Does that, are you guys following this? Like we're all growing. We're all, it's generational, this stuff. This stuff is generational and we're healing. And if we can heal it and reveal it and forgive it, we can, we can grow. We really can grow. I don't know. I just kind of rambled that off the top of my head. I hope it helped somebody. I'm going to close with a Maya Angelou quote, which is, it's one of the greatest gifts you can give yourself to forgive. Forgive everybody. I remember when she said that. It was just so beautiful. She said it on Oprah, I think. Forgive everybody. 
Sandy, forgiveness is the parole board of our heart. I'm going to read some of your comments. Jenny says, forgiveness doesn't mean that what the person did was okay, but that you release them from showing up the way you expected. Yes, expectations. I cry with joy as you sing, oh, love to you, Charlie. Sandy says, a grudge is pain we inflict on ourselves from someone else's action. We are the ones who benefit when we forgive and let go of that pain. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys so much for giving your your two cents about forgiveness as well. And I saw that Elisa has shared a story. I'll read it later. I'm sorry I didn't get to read it during this time together. We have a few more things I'd like to offer you. Um, thank you for listening to my talk on forgiveness. I hope that you got something great out of it. Um, now I move into just a moment where I invite you to consider giving today, consciously giving. Um, you can give two ways now. There's paypal.me slash house of love and light or Venmo at amy steinberg 5 If you feel that you have benefited at all or that you're benefiting from this time with us together, and that you've been fed, then you have the opportunity to reciprocate with some financial offering. Um, I'm so grateful for every dollar that comes in that allows me to live an art-led life, as Lisa put it, art-led life. This art behind me, um, this one is still actually for sale. This one is sold, it was a commission, um, but I'm always willing to paint if you'd like me to paint a gift, a Christmas gift, or we're on that last minute there if you'd like me to paint something for you. Um, I am just so grateful to be able to be able to be here with you at House of Love and Light. So thank you so much for your offerings. Um, coming up next week is friends and fam, of course, right? As we prepare for the holiday next Sunday, we're going to be talking about being in that place of compassion with our friends and our family. So I'm looking forward to that, continuing to read this beautiful book by Kristen Neff. If you haven't gotten it yet, you might really benefit from this. If you, if you struggle with like beating the crap out of yourself all the time, that's kind of my thing. Um, that book might be good for you. You know, we do that here at, at House of Love and Light. We do the, we do the self-love stuff. Um, somebody in my life who I'm very close with said, I don't do that self-love stuff. And I was like, oh girl, I got to do the self-love stuff. I got to do the self-love stuff. What if everyone was forgiven? Who would I be, Myron says. Ooh, that's big. That's really big. All right, so listen, y'all. One more shout out here for, let me see, do I have it? Yeah, for my Kickstarter. I have reached my goal. However, it sort of came to my attention that there's this awesome company online that will get my record out to labels and radio and promotions and I think there might be one or two songs on this record that are hit songs, like like bona fide, like on the radio hit songs. I've been bathing in, in pop music for about two years. One thing that AJ Johnson, my uh, partner, gave me was uh, she loves pop music. And so I started listening to the radio about two and a half years ago. I hadn't listened to the radio in probably a decade. So I started listening to pop radio. And so this record that I'm releasing has a lot of influence of that. You can really hear the currency, the current energy of this music. And I, I really want to get it out to promoters. So I realized after I made my Kickstarter goal that I made it too low if I really want to have promotions. So I kind of doing a push goal. I hit my goal, but I want to, I'd love to hit 15K. I would love to hit 15K. I'm at like 12K now and 100, 100 people are backing the CD. I don't want to go on about this too long. Just go to kickstartamy.com, pre-purchase the CD. That will give me a head. I'm super stoked about that. I'm not going to ask about it. Uh, we've only got like a few more weeks on this and then you won't be able to, you won't be hearing about Kickstarter anymore. <laughs> I'm not trying to beg. Okay. I'm not trying to beg, but whatever. I'm asking the gift of asking. Amanda Palmer taught us about that. All right. We have astrology, and then I have a little TikTok tidbit, and then today we have crystals with Joe and a tool of the week, so there's more to come. Don't go anywhere. Here is astrology with Lorelai. She's an amazing astrologer, so listen up if you're into the stars. Hello, my brothers and sisters of the house of love and light. It's Lorelai. Well, what I want to talk to you about today is a cycle that's coming Right now, the planet Jupiter, which is the planet of wisdom, growth, optimism, and expansion, is in the last two degrees of the zodiac. Jupiter is about the meaning and purpose of life. The last two degrees of the zodiac are in Pisces, the last sign of the zodiac. So what does that mean? Because on December 20th, Jupiter will leave the last sign of the zodiac and catapult into the initiating fire sign of Aries, the point of all beginning, or what I love to call Star Trek energy. So what this really means is 
let all the stuff come up, the martyr, the victim, the places where you feel tired, the places where you're wondering, is this still going on in my life? This has been happening for years. Why can't I change this? And again, you know, in radical forgiveness, which is such a beautiful Pisces construct, forgiveness, compassion, gentleness, and kindness, the first step of radical forgiveness is be the victim and tell the story. So I suggest that you connect with some folks that you trust, even if it's just one person, and tell the story of whatever's not working in your life, whatever's painful, whatever's scary, whatever's causing you worry or anxiety. Guess what the second step of radical forgiveness is? It's feel the feelings. If you can't feel it, you can't heal it. We know that from many of the spiritual traditions. So instead of criticizing yourself or perhaps judging yourself that some old pattern is hanging over you or where you don't feel content, you don't feel happy, again, you just feel tired, like when is this all going to be over? Just know the universe, which always has our back, has your back, is giving you the opportunity to let stuff come up from way back, maybe from lifetimes, but to allow yourself to forgive whatever is coming back, to tell the story, and to have it witnessed. That is what is so important. So the beautiful Hawaiian prayer of forgiveness, Ho'oponopono, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, and I love you. I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, I love you. And for the power of three, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, and I love you. And until we connect, I wish you blue skies, green lights, and lucky stars. Are you as obsessed with her as I am? I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. Ho'oponopono. Give yourself the gift of doing that with anything that you are having resentment toward, people, places, or things. Let it go. Now, today on the TikTok tidbit, we're going to do the TikTok tidbit right into the crystals with Joe and um, Crystal Corner. And uh, I'm just going <laughs> to say this is one of my favorite TikTokers. And I wanted to inject some humor in the day because it's kind of heavy thinking of compassion and forgiveness. So enjoy this hysterical TikToker. And then we'll be right after that. You'll hear about some crystals that can help you with forgiveness and healing. If you're into crystals, if you're not, just enjoy Joe telling you about crystals. Because when you look at the, I was looking at the video of the crystals, Joe, and I could feel the crystals through the screen. Listen, energy is energy. It's working. I'm a hippie. I'm a weirdo. Look at this big ass crystal I have right here. It's fueling this entire thing. <laughs> Here's the funny TikTok. Enjoy. Hi, TikTok. A lot of you have asked if I have plans for celebrating the holidays. And unfortunately, I don't believe in observing days. A few other things about me. My deodorant is a homemade paste crafted from pine sap and piping hot soy candle wax. I teach a bi-monthly workshop on how to tune a mandolin in gale force winds. I selectively breed luna moths for larger wingspans so I can wear their husks as cloaks. I'm currently developing a one-woman show that's a retelling slash reimagining of The Godfather as a lesbian boarding school romance. My outdoor sauna is powered by cognitive reframing. My twin flame is a bowl of kimchi. In each new moon, I claim abundance by igniting mounds of stolen cash. I envision a utopian gift economy where people can trade mason jars of apple cider vinegar for hotel franchises. And I recognize the light within you, TikTok. Hey, this is Josie with Crystal Corner this week. These are my top crystals for inviting forgiveness and compassion into your heart. We'll start with rose quartz. This tower is a beauty. This is from my own personal collection. Rose quartz is a stone of unconditional love and its healing vibrations help replace emotions and blockages that clog the heart chakra. It's a perfect stone to use for your forgiveness journey. Rhodonite is the next one. 
It resonates with the energies of love and compassion. It balances emotions, encourages acceptance, forgiveness, and love towards others. Morganite is the stone of divine love that has an immediate connection with the higher heart chakra. It helps you to overcome past traumas and release and heal from hurt, grief, feelings of betrayal or heartache. It's a crucial step in the forgiveness process. Our next stone is blue lace agate. When you need patience or when you need to seek or give forgiveness, this is a great stone to use. It's one of the more powerful vibrations that help deal with emotions due to unforgiveness. Let me just move this around a little bit so you can see some of the patterns there. Our next ones are rhodochrosite. These two little tumbled stones are some of my absolute favorite. And rhodochrosite represents the stone of the compassionate heart. It heals old wounds and enhances self-love and love for others. Next is black obsidian. It's one of the best stones to let go of the past and release toxic self-judgment, resentment, or unforgiveness that is holding you back from happiness and freedom. And last but certainly not least, Peridot. Known as a stone of transformation, it is very helpful for dissipating negative behaviors. Look at that, so beautiful. Or patterns that hold you back. It heals emotional wounds, relieves heaviness of heart, encourages forgiveness caused by betrayal in past relationships. That's all I got for you today. I hope you have a wonderful Sunday. See you next time. Thank you so much, Joe. I love, 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 love how you talk about crystals. And also, just so you guys know, I read tarot cards, but Joe Ann reads tarot cards too. So if you want a tarot card reading, but you don't want it from me, <laughs> or if you want to just try a different tarot reader, Joanne is, has helped me through so much over the past couple of years since I've known her. It's maybe a year, year and a half. I love you so much, Joanne. You are a gift in my life. So there's a tool this week. This is how I'm closing today. It's send love to the painful places, you guys. Holidays can be really hard for a lot of people. It can be lonely. There's this like idea that we're supposed to all be invited to holiday parties. I haven't been invited to one holiday party, <laughs> except for that unity. I was invited to the unity gathering to sing, but I'm, um, you know, it's funny, my friend Beanie, who's here, she's not listening. She's not really into this kind of stuff, but she's down in the basement right now, smoking a cigarette. And, um, and she's, uh, she's like, I hate Christmas. <laughs> She hates all the wrapping paper and all the waste and all the, she says every day is Christmas for me. And I get that. Like, I feel like to me to walk around, like there's one special day is silly. Like every day is special. Every day is a gift. However, I do love the holidays. And I want to say this is the first year in many years that I'm actually not putting a Christmas tree up. Like consciously, I'm consciously being Jewish this year in honor of my dad. Cause my dad would have hated that I had a Christmas tree in the house and my mom's up the street. And so we're going to really have Hanukkah on full blast this year. And, uh, you know me, I'm, I love Christmas and I love Jesus and I love the Christ light and all that stuff, but I am Jewish, you know, and you have to remember who you are, right? So I love you so much. I love everybody so much for being here today. I want to thank you again for your love offerings and invite you to please give today because it's the holidays, right? So give, give extra, give, give from the heart. And if you can meet me here, back here on Wednesday at 7 p.m., we have this thing called um, Music and Meditation, which is we chill, check in, and chant. It's an hour. And we take an hour to check in at the beginning and at the end, and we see what singing and laughing and talking and hanging out uh transforms us and raises our vibration it's a very special it's much less structured than these sundays and it's really a beautiful thing and again kickstartamy.com and i just love you i just love you all so much and this has been an absolutely beautiful sunday 
I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Enjoy this beautiful month of December. Enjoy going within. Be compassionate with yourself. Be forgiving of yourself and send love to those painful places, to those painful things, those people, those places, those things. Just let it go with love. I'm going to close actually with a a reading from the self-compassion book that I found about loving kindness. One of the traditional Buddhist practices developed uh, uh, is developing a goodwill towards ourselves and others is called loving kindness meditation. You might know about this, you might not. In this practice, phrases that invoke benevolent feelings are repeated silently. And these phrases are, may I be safe, may I be peaceful, may I be healthy, may I live with ease, may I be safe, may I be peaceful, May I be healthy, may I live with ease, and then we direct it towards someone we love. May you be safe, may you be peaceful, may you be healthy, may you live with ease, and then we direct it to those that we have resentment or anger toward, and we just try to find that place of peace, find that place of wishing well for the world. I love you all so much. Mm Bye-bye. Right.